In today's video, I'm gonna cover a few basic concepts on how to make your text stand out against images and make sure that it's the most legible it can be. So that way, whatever you're putting onto your images in regards to text or information isn't getting lost. So uh, what I've got here is I've got a document in Photoshop and I've just got a white background. And the reason I'm starting with a simple white background is I wanna talk about contrast. If I turn on this text layer, it says here text is about contrast because our eyes see symbols and the way that symbols stand out is by basically contrasting against the background they're on. So black is the opposite in the color spectrum to white. So therefore it's easiest to read something which is black on white. And of course it's the same if I happen to uh, invert this and make this text white, you will see again, it's easiest to read that way because it's clearly different from the background. One thing I want to point out though is that's why when you have say a slightly darker color like this gray against the white which you can kind of barely see the symbols are exactly the same except the difference in color is less and it's harder to read so we do want to work on optimizing contrast between the background and the text to make sure, make sure it's the most legible and of course then a lot of people do this which I heavily disagree with it's not a design rule popping an outline on text does make it stand out from the background, but it's actually more difficult to read because our eyes want some simplicity. We're looking for symbols. Instead, we sort of have to, our eyes have to sort of process the outline and then actually process the text within that outline. It just takes a little bit longer to read. So it's not the most optimal way, in my opinion, to actually do what we're trying to do. So now if I go to this image here, obviously, I don't know if you can see this, but there's some black text against a dark background. So naturally, of course, we don't have any contrast. So black on almost black doesn't work. So essentially, if I decide to change that to, or add a, a glow, it does stand out, but it's still not really optimal. There is contrast in the sense that we have a red glow compared to the blue, but it's still just a bit more difficult to read and your eye doesn't pick it up straight away. So once again, if I turn these off and we go to an outline, it stands out, still more difficult to read. But we go to white and all of a sudden it works because the contrast is at its highest. Now we're not just talking about white against black here because what we can do, since we have a dark background, is we can choose a bright light color like this blue. So it's still very easy to read because it's still very high contrast against the background. If I decide to go for dark color, like uh, even something like this, which is lighter, but still kind of dull, it's still a bit hard to read, but easier. So you sort of get the idea. We want to make sure we keep things, especially when we're on a plain background, very sort of bright. And you'll notice here, this is another issue which we have. If you have a complicated background, it gets more difficult. I have some text here, which is a color. We've got lots of colors in this image and the text is very thin. So even if I decide to make that text white, it's a little bit more legible, but difficult because we've got so much detail that the thin text doesn't stand out as much. But if I change it to a thicker text, you can now read it. The problem is, again, this is much better than the last two examples, but if I decide I want that to stand out, I want people to read that straight away, it still kind of gets lost in the image and your eye isn't drawn to that text, so it's not instantly something you would read. Now you can add a drop shadow to uh, something like this and it does stand out a little bit more, but it still is competing with the background a little bit, which is why if you have an image background like this, I recommend introducing something like a block behind the text. And that will actually help the text to stand out more and your eye get drawn to it because the contrast is we have two very strong flat colors, a darker and a lighter color against a very mixed complicated background. That will help your images to stand out uh, against the text and text against the images because the nature of these two areas is different. Complicated, lots of detail, plain, very simple. Therefore, it stands out quite easily. Now, even when you're not using color, I switch to this image here. It's black and white. If I turn on the white text, it's there. It says, can you read me? But it's almost impossible to read. And even if I switch to black, same thing again. We can't really read the text against the image because we have too many intersecting lines of black and white. So what we can do, we can add a block behind it. So now it's far more readable. However, this image is mostly white. I would say probably 70% white, 80% white and bits of black. 
So I would actually even recommend trying to go against the majority of the image because it's mostly white with bits of black. We have the text block mostly black with a bit of white over it. So that's some basic examples of how you get something to stand out on a complicated background. Now, if you really want to play with contrast, we can actually say, take this black and white image and use some bright colors in the text. So now you can see we have these bright colors against a black and white image. It's not the most attractive look, but the colors stand out because it's against a black and white background. And of course, if you have a really bright background like the other one and the colors are sort of more of a black and white, they tend to stand out just as well. But even on top of that, I've got yellow and blue, which are kind of like two opposing colors in the spectrum. We've got a bright, warmish sort of color against a cool color. Within that, we also have the contrast of yellow against blue. So we've got the contrast of this object, which draws the eye. And then we've also got the contrast of the text to the box, the blue box. So by working on creating contrast, we can actually have our text on our images stand out far more. But what do we do when we're not talking about headlines? What if we have smaller text? Because things do get more complicated. Now, if I switch back to this image, you'll notice we've got some text here. It's very small. So uh, it kind of stands out, it's easy to read, but the size is just too small in the eye and it's just difficult to read. So you have to follow basic legible sort of rules, like you know, making sure your text is big enough to read. So if I pump the size up to say you know, 50, I'll have to change the line height for a sec. Then you see that's quite easy to read, but then we have the same issues because if I copy this layer, but pop it on this image, it's still quite difficult to read. And sure, we can grab this block here and duplicate it to create another section. But at what point do you start to sort of give up the photo for the text? Because at the moment, we're losing a lot of the photo because we're putting blocks on everything and we kind of want to retain that effect. So not only do we stick with just blocks, so if I go to this image here, and once again, if I do decide to create a block, we lose the majority of the image to text blocks, which is not ideal. So what we can do is go through a different process where if I go to the text, which is this layer here, I can go to my, my blending options and I can add a drop shadow. It makes it very hard to read against that background. But what I can do is actually use that drop shadow not to stand out against the image, but to stand out against a slight difference. So what we can do is actually create another layer here. I'm gonna create a full black image and I can actually pop the opacity down and just darken the image a bit so that the text is legible against it. It's still not perfectly ideal, but that's an option, especially if you're doing uh, websites, things like that, we need text to go over images. Just darkening that image with some light text or lighting an image with dark text can help. Another thing you can do is also to turn that off completely and we can, almost like we're gonna create a block draw a little square and pop a gradient of some sort in there. Put that on multiply and we can actually just have a bit of a fade, whoops, a bit of a fade going on that text. So the image is still there and it's still full strength around the text and that way we have something that stands out. This works really well if you have something say in the corner of an image. So if I decide to move this layer to the bottom, I can take this gradient flip it around and that way we get a nice little fade in at the corner so it doesn't look unnatural on the image things are dark down here but the rest of the image still stands out and of course using that we can also add one of these uh, layers here so I turn this one off whoops I can grab this text layer here move it down hit the T to make that white for a sec and now we have something that stands out because I can adjust this gradient, make it bigger, make it darker. I can then also do other things. So now I have this slight fade here, adding a drop shadow isn't quite as harsh. So if I go into my blending options and add a drop shadow, all of a sudden we have a softer look that's still quite easy to read. So just a few thoughts when you are designing, try to think of ways so obviously if your text can go against a plain or uncluttered area of the image, that's great. If the entire image is cluttered, you can add in boxes, but also 
this is a great way to work with complicated images is just to sort of fade a color from one point to another, pop the text with a shadow over the top, and that will help it to stand out. So that's kind of like the process I would look at. Look for the simple area. If you can't find that, do something like this, like a box or a fade for a complicated area, and just make sure that whatever the primary sort of tone or color of the image is, that your text is the opposite of that, so it's easier to read. So I hope you found that interesting. I hope that was useful to you. Uh, just a quick little video just to give you some tips on your designs for social media or whatever it is you're doing because we quite often see people making these fundamental mistakes, which makes their designs difficult to read. So uh, let me know your thoughts. Drop a comment below if you have any questions. Um, if you want more and more videos like this, make sure you give the video a like because this is the first video I've done with just some basic tips like this. And if it's worked out for you and you've got something from it, let me know and I'll work on creating more. And of course, any ideas you want to hear about, leave a comment below and maybe we'll do a video on it. All right, thanks for watching the video and I hope to see you again soon.